Thank you for such a sweet introduction, Marika. <laughs> Um, I tell stories for a living, but not usually in front of huge groups, so bear with me. Um, you know, I've been really inspired uh, by what I heard this morning, and uh, I was wondering about actually the idea of storytelling versus information delivery. I've kind of been wrestling with this all morning, and I was prepared to stand up here and start grousing about, you know, why, if we're all so creative, are we seeing the same old story? Or what feels like the same old story, okay? So, um, you know, for me, I, when I was thinking about this theme of storytelling, this is the oldest thing on the planet. People painted cave art. I mean, there's, there's a desire for us to connect. But with all this great technology that we have, and we're all playing with our phones, and we're all you know, throwing content up on the, on the internet, great, and it's such a wonderful thing to be able to connect, but are we connecting or are we disconnecting? Um, you know, for me, the, I've, I've worked um, in radio, and now I work in, in uh, documentary film, so it, it takes a little bit more than me you know, working on something at home and putting it up on, on the internet, which, is like a, of course, I don't want to diss anybody. It's a really valuable way of doing things. And I, uh, I enjoy the things that are done on the fly, cheaply, with, you know, with few resources. But, um, uh, but for me, the idea of storytelling is not just delivering information or delivering interesting information, but making a connection. I yearn to make that connection, and for me, it's been a privilege to storytell all of these years because I get to enter someone's world, I get to absorb the information, have an exchange, and be able to put it back out into the world in a format that somebody can understand and hopefully connect and resonate with. And I can do it in a boring way, when I hope I don't, and I can do it in an interesting way. Um, you know, it's funny because I, I was going to grouse about in my own field, it's re all about reality programming, the trend for the past 10 years, right? Okay, why are we all interested in reality programming? Probably because it's the caveman thing. We are going to sit around the fire, connect, and somehow ha have the illusion, or maybe actually really connect by being inside people's lives. But um, it seems to me once you put uh, fit a story into what Marika would call a process, okay? I call it a format, she calls it a process. Once you box it into the format, whatever that format is, don't you lose something? Aren't you tired of seeing the same old thing on television or maybe even on YouTube as we all get, you know, hipper and are putting different snippets on? Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Ira Glass, who uh, is actually a radio guy and now a television guy. Um, I worked with Ira uh, back when he was first starting out, and uh, it, Ira does a, a show called This American Life, which is the underbelly of, uh, of life in America and resonates with you just kind of like Garrison Keillor does on the radio because there's some little grain in that, no matter what your life is, that you can resonate with. Um, Ira uh, started off doing interviews of kids at high schools. And notoriously, I mean, those of you who've been around teenagers, what kind of inf information do you get out of them? I recently saw a brilliant piece that he did on video of, um, of uh, high, high interviews with high school kids. And his secret was ask, you know, to, to get a good interview was ask questions that people can answer. And he was able to just extract in, on this high school yearbook photo day the most amazing things from people. Um, you know, I feel that stories take many shapes and forms. They have their own lives. You have to let them have a format that works for the story. It, don't use the, the, the content, don't use the, um, the format to determine what your content should be. And my very personal, um, actually, I think I'm running out of time here, but I'd love to um, play for you if I can. Can I do this from here to play the video? Video, please, Meister. This is my own personal, uh, well, actually, before you play it, uh, I have been privileged to just work on a film on uh, a baby mammoth discovered in Siberia. What amazing opportunity to, uh, to produce a film on a fairy tale story, an actual uh, come to life, 
Oops. Well, let's play it because I'm coming out of, running out of time here. This is sound? No sound. Okay, I'm going to get gonged here pretty soon. <laughs> Oh well. <coughs> Technical difficulties? Oops. <laughs> that wasn't me. These people, the nets, are no ants who survive out here by breeding reindeer and fishing, just as their ancestors have for hundreds of years. And it's here on this empty stretch of time that you and Rudy will confront the creature of another age. Okay, so I was delivered this, uh, I, I found out about a 40,000 year old baby mammoth uh, that was uh, out on the tundra. How did it come, how did it show up there? How, you know, what's the, the I mean this is a, a mystery in and of itself. How, how did it come to be there? And uh, we did a film about this recently, it ran on National Geographic. They wanted us to do an autopsy film. They wanted to do CSI, a format. You know, we're going to deliver this thing, we're going to dissect the baby and, you know, find out how she lived, how she died and all that. And I said, we have to go to the tundra. We have to, we have to relate to the people who found it. We have to explore layers of this mystery. And they're going, no, 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 we're going to, ratings are going to be terrible. It's just going to be horrible. And don't do it. I decided to go anyway. I broke the rules. Um, I mean, one of my rules is master the format and then definitely break the rules. And uh, the result was this. Um, slide? Okay, wrong clicker. Ah, okay, against all odds. <laughs> breaking the rules and actually doing the thing, breaking the format. Uh, doing something that absolutely wouldn't work for their channel got them the highest rated uh, ratings for the quarter. Uh, just to say that had I done it the, the, the way that we had planned on doing, that they had asked me to do it, it never would have worked. So I say always be ready to take a chance, innovate, start over, be fearless, and find the magic in the stories. And the last slide. No? Let the story unfold. <laughs> Thank you.